Welcome to the Nuji Center. My name is Ed, Ed Metallica, and um, this is the Nuji Center on Water Tower Road. We're a uh, community center for people in recovery and, and people struggling with mental health issues. So stop on by. We always have coffee on. And today we are doing another episode of Zhibakwada with Ed. And we are cooking uh, two recipes. And we have shifted over into the, our fall series, which means, as you can see, we're all decorated out for fall here. And we're going to be doing a lot of recipes that uh, people like to have in the, um, in, in the latter part of the year. Uh, today, we're going to do two recipes that call for just about the same ingredients. And I did these at home the other day, and it was delicious. Um, one is a wild rice corn soup, and the other one is a corn and wild rice pudding. So the way I figured someone could do both these recipes for a dinner, oh, excuse me, the corn and wild rice pudding is not a dessert, you might think, because it says pudding, but it's actually a great side dish. It kind of tastes like a, uh, like a stuffing that would go with a turkey or something. And uh, we had it with some steak, and it was delicious, but I could see having it with chicken or pork or even fish. It was really good. So um, the two recipes. One goes in the oven. The other one is, is the soup. So we're going to start off with the oven recipe. And to get going on that, first thing you want to do you want to turn your oven on to like 325 degrees. Um, and then we were gonna, we're gonna mix the ingredients for uh, the, the pudding. And while the pudding is cooking in the oven, we'll do the soup. So here's the ingredients we're gonna use today. We've got corn, some cooked wild rice, butter, some shredded carrots and um, onions, chopped up onions, a little bit of flour, uh, a chicken broth or bouillon, uh, some green onions and uh, you can use either green onions or like basil is good. You'll see where it goes in the recipe and you'll realize that, oh, basil, if you still have some leftover from the summer, would also work well. Then we're going to be using two eggs, two whole eggs, and one extra egg yolk. And some garlic, some nutmeg, of course, salt and pepper, and um, heavy whipping cream. Most of these ingredients I think you have at home, except for maybe the whipping cream. So that might be something that you'd need to run out and buy, but um, we're not going to be handing out ingredients for these recipes because I think um, it's stuff that most people have at home already. Um, one thing we are going to do, though, is I'm going to offer everybody to stop by the Nuji Center if they want and pick up one of these julienne and vegetable peelers. I have eight of them to give away, and they're a really handy little tool. Uh, it's got a peeler on one side. It's got a julienne on the other side. And what that does is if you uh, rub it across a, a squash or, or um, carrots or something, it actually gives you noodles, long, thin strips of the vegetables. You can use vegetables as noodles. Um, you can also use that to shred something. So if you, you make the long sections and chop it up a little bit with um, a knife and you've got shredded vegetables. It's also got two little nubs on the side that are razor sharp for taking like the eyes out of potatoes or cleaning up, uh, you know, a part of a vegetable that maybe doesn't look as good. So it's a handy little tool. There's a lot of things. And I've got eight of them to give away, so please stop by the Nuji Center at 37450 Water Tower Road and just hop in, grab a cup of coffee, and we'll give you one of those. So let's get started. I got my oven on at 325, and we're going to combine the eggs and heavy cream and a little bit of water. The recipes that are with the video will give you the exact quantities on everything. Uh, I'm going to be using a cup and a third of heavy whipping cream. All right, and um, about a third cup of water. These two recipes are super tasty, by the way. Then we're going to do a cup of wild rice. And to that, we're going to add a third of uh, two. It's I'm going to do two cups of corn. Since I've made this, I kind of know what 
that's a good amount to put in here. But just follow the recipes for the exact quantities. All right. We're just going to whisk all these together. So what makes this work and turns it into a pudding, of course, you've all probably guessed, is the eggs. Those yolks will bind everything together. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of nutmeg. And excuse me, I get some salt and pepper. All right, and I'm going to use our green onion. I say basil is good for this too. Then find yourself a casserole dish, or um, I'm going to use a pie pan here for that. I'm one of these cooks that doesn't like a lot of dishes, dirty dishes when I'm cooking, so you'll see me rinsing stuff and uh, reusing it a lot. So what you want to do is get a nice coat of uh, butter on this pan, keeps the egg mixture the pudding from sticking. It's all right if you have a little bit of extra butter on there it's just going to go into the pudding. So we grease that up. And we'll give it one last stir, put it in that casserole or pie tin, whatever. And you bake it in the oven at 325. Took me about 45 minutes of baking when I did it, and it had a nice golden brown crust on it when, when it was done. And it made a great side dish for, for the meat that we had. Two of our favorite ingredients too, corn and wild rice. So there it is. And by the time your soup is done simmering and everything, um, your pudding should be done or close to done. And then you're just going to want to do whatever kind of uh, main dish you want to have alongside the pudding. Green salad would go well with that too. So to make the soup, I want you to know I've had a lot of wild rice soups and this is one of the best ones I've ever had. I think the key is it's got butter and heavy cream in it. And everything is good with butter and heavy cream, right? So, I'm going to melt that butter. And we're going to add our shredded carrots and chopped up onions. The whole idea of this is to cook the onions for a few minutes until they start to get translucent. Kind of cooked. Um, we'll add our garlic. Pepper and a little bit of salt. And you might let this cook for a couple, two, three minutes. I'm going to switch utensils here because it's getting warm with that little fork I was using. Okay, 
Okay. Turn the heat down a little bit. And then we're going to add flour. Now what, the, what this is going to do is that butter and flour are going to bind and create what uh, some cooks call a roux. And that becomes a basis for thickening up the soup. And uh, when you start heating up flour like this, it smells like flour. When that smell goes away, after about 30 seconds or a minute, then that's a good time to add the broth. And that will thicken up. Turn the heat up a little bit. get this to a uh, good boil and you'll see it thicken up. It's happening already. There, you see that? Yeah. Uh, thickened up right away. Okay, then we will add our rice. And you know, if you like a lot of rice in your uh, rice soup, then go ahead and add a little bit more than the recipe calls for. I think for this amount, I do like a lot of rice. I'm going to do about that much. Let's see how thick that's getting? So again, that's what they kind of call a roux. All right, I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. And this is where we add cream. Just the right amount, Buck. That is a nice thick soup. <laughs> Once it uh, comes to a boil, you want to turn it down. Just keep it simmering. You don't want to boil the uh, cream. a nice thick soup. If you want to thin it out, go ahead and just add a little bit of water to it. Uh, it becomes too thick. And then we're going to add the uh, corn just to warm it, warm it up. And then just let this warm for about 10 minutes. Uh, let the flavors blend together and um, again keep it on a simmer don't boil that corn and especially the cream and there you have it it's a corn wild rice soup and it is hearty and it's a great start to a good meal uh, the pudding has been going for about 10 minutes so now it's a good time to start your entree whatever it's going to be and the pudding will be ready in time and you'll have a terrific meal so we'll include the recipes along with the Anishinaabe Ojibwa translations. And don't forget to stop by the Moody Center for your julienne and vegetable peeler. And I hope everyone has a great day. I'm looking forward to some exciting menus for the uh, upcoming fall season here. So miigwech everyone, and uh, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm.